Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Can you give me five minutes to talk on one more? Gentlemen, thank you. The Lord bless you. You will never go down in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Are we blessed? Pray in the Spirit in one minute. Just to absorb what you have received. That's all right. Praise the Lord. Now listen. The second law is called the law of value. The second law is called the law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The law of value. My God, somebody's life is truly changing. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, someone's life is changing. Look up please. Proverbs 18 and verse 16 says, The gift of a man makes room for him. The gift of a man makes room for him and that gift like an usher can bring him before great people he has no business being among the great but his gift can make room before then there's no room for him there was no room for esther the palace already had someone sitting there but the gift of a man the law of value Write this down. Your value is a measure of your usefulness. Your value is a measure of your uniqueness. Your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. Your value is a measure of your usefulness. Your value is a measure of your uniqueness. Your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. This is a world that operates based on a reward system. That means that if you are not providing solutions, listen carefully, there is no reward that is mandated to come towards you if you are not providing solutions. Only those who provide solutions are authorized for reward. Not those who are alive. Not those who are living. Not even those who are sincere. Your value is the edge that you have in this busy world. That's what sustains the ability to cause the attention of men towards you. To love you. To reward you. And to see to it that you are blessed. 
many many people do not pay attention on this law the law of value the bible says the gift of a man can make room for him it says and that it can bring him before great people i wish we had time would have looked at genesis chapter 40 and genesis 41 write it please for the sake of time the bible talks about a young hebrew boy when a lady said he raped her the, the wife of um, um what's his name now potiphar they threw him in the prison and he was there didn't know he was just days i mean maybe about two or so years left to be out of the prison he meets these two gentlemen and then interprets their dream one was hung and then the wine presser was restored back watch this when it was time for god to lift joseph he shot the heavens over the sorcerers the necromancers they could not use divination again to access heaven let me tell you how god lived he makes sure that everyone who can be a competitor is out of the way and then he pushes you and shines the light on your value in the presence of those who need it your value on its own does not reward you until it comes in the presence of those who need it your value must be needed and useful within the context of a civilization for it to be rewarded. Mere value, arbitrarily speaking, does not bring reward. But it must be needed and useful. So that morning, the king woke up with a dream. And he said, something is wrong. Call my wise men. Call my necromancers. And that day, the heavens could not open for them. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man. We were in the prison. The king was angry and it and this and that and that and he's still there. The Bible says, and the king sent for him and they brought him out of his dungeon. Then the king began to narrate his dream and Pharaoh la um, Joseph laughed. I'm sure he would just be happy and say, my time has come. I know I'm not going back to prison again. Oh king, God will give the king an answer of peace. The dream you've had is twice. And when he interpreted it, that was not the solution. They would have said thank you very much give him one day's off back to the prison but he said king let me give you the solution find a man it's a diplomatic way of saying i dare you search if you will find a man he just was being polite about it he wouldn't market himself directly like that so he angled it he said let the king use your initiative and search the entire egypt if you find such a man appoint him to save 20 percent of all the increase now for seven years so that at the time of famine you will have enough and the king looked at him and said you think i'm a stupid king didn't i search for people before i called you in a moment his value gave him a wife you know that he married the daughter of potiphera the priest of on like that without any waste of time of will you marry me and the, the wife was given to him value are we together number two the king said from today it is only in ranking that i'm ahead of you as far as administration is concerned you are the face that the whole egypt will see i wonder what potiphar would have done i wonder what the wife of potiphar would do seeing him now Brothers and sisters, your value has a lifting power. It can elevate you and put you in a position that your contemporaries would not even be able to go there. Value is powerful. Just let me a few minutes we are done. When I found this, I made up my mind, Pastor, that in every area where the Lord would have me serve the body, I would be competent and be valuable it was a commitment and a covenant that i entered with myself and my destiny apostle but i'm valuable relative to who oh i'm a good cook until you can serve kings you are not yet there if you want the reward of kings you have to know how to serve kings i am a cook who is eating your food? Why do they have to call you only when the professionals disappoint people? That's already a call that you need to step up. 
this is even true for ministry maybe there are people watching who are in ministry and you think just because the holy ghost comes upon you are we together just because of the grace of god no you must study to show yourself approved you must be students of scripture make up your mind i say the truth and i lie not you go to my house now you will go and find videos i'm watching there are things i'm doing even though there's service in the evening but once i'm back i could take a nap and i'm not just going to laugh and say i'm apostle joshua selman the study continues i can return back from a great crusade lord thank you for what you did that's it let's get to work champions don't patch themselves for too long listen to me you are not contending against mediocres you must rise to a global standard and it takes diligence you must be valuable don't quote scriptures anyhow as a man of god you are saying things that are not there prophecy is still wrong you call somebody's name he's not the one you have five children and no, no, i'm the only one child no 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 I, i'm not i'm not condemning you but go back and work on this thing Are we together you have a restaurant your food burns before the time people are hungry they are thirsty they are waiting there's no excellence you must be valuable the superstition we've put around finances is why we don't prosper there is a formula for wealth in business we call it the law of compensation let me just state it and we'll wrap up for this service this is church you see why it's important to hold conferences where we can come and feast because this thing takes time i found this law and it changed my life write it down please that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the need for what you do number two the ability your ability to do what you do that's your level of proficiency and then number three the difficulty in replacing you our rewards will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability or your proficiency in doing what you do. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. You are valuable to the degree to which it is difficult to find a replacement for you. No man is indispensable, but be very hard to find a replacement for you. Then the nations will call you then even those who don't like you will have no choice than to be at your beck and call when i found this formula i said this is it the need is there a need for what i do my god there is darkness in this whole world so the next thing is my ability the union of the word and the spirit I read in my scripture how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Not just that he was anointed. He was anointed to such degree and such proportion. And I said, this is it. And then the difficulty in replacing you. Will you truly find another pastor, Godwin and the wife? Oh, it will be difficult. Many of us are easily replaceable. That's the reason why you can be downsized carelessly. That's why people can give you promises and say, when I spoke to you, I didn't know there was another person. Now that they are here, please, can you go? I will consider you another time. You must make up your mind that I will be so valuable, so valuable. Years ago, when I was teaching this series, I got to meet a gentleman who used to work then in Kaduna State. His minimum salary was 500000 He was working three times a week and he was working in three places was an IT consultant they would fly him in from Lagos to Kaduna every week without fail he was so valuable for many years they pleaded with him to train a few people but he did and the guys were not understanding it and the boss said no matter what I will keep you you are valuable 
oh i'm not feeling fine can we get you a doctor what do we need to do because the company is at the mercy of one man's value i pray for you in the name that is above all names may the grace for diligence come upon you listen chasing after mediocre rewards will only frustrate you 10 naira 20 naira 150 no make up your mind that a time will come when kings will bless you and still say thank you listen now, I, I don't want to bring bad memories, forgive me. But when there was NSAS, there was something that happened. Palliatives were kept somewhere in a warehouse. Is that true? The warehouse did not have an address. The warehouse did not have publicity. It didn't have an usher, but there were bags of rice inside. Bags of Indomie, bags of sugar, bags of salt. And hunger drove people to navigate among all the buildings to find the one that had it and when they found it they tore that building into two look at the skills that were invented to jump those buildings what if you are that building what if you become that building a compendium of value the address was no longer difficult to locate nobody said ah, the building is not very nice they look past it. They knew. Let me tell you, men will give every kind of excuse to find you when you are really valuable. I know this. You know you are valuable by who seeks you. All men seeks for thee. All men. There are things when you have, only your tribesmen will look for you. There are things when you have, only the rich will look for you. There are things when you have, only the poor will look for you. There are things when you have, only children will look for you. There are things when you have, only the educated will look for you. But brothers and sisters, there are things when you have all men. All men. All men. Pastor Godwin, I made up my mind. And I told myself. you write your exams you mark it you award yourself no rank yourself by a global reference africa thank god for this continent and i know god is helping us but we must be careful because for many of us where we come from even at the point of failure they start clapping for you our world is full of people who don't do much in ministry demand applause whereas there are people changing nations and changing cities god brought you to church so that you will learn i spoke with um, a gentleman who is a personal photographer to the president of the federation and i remember when i was speaking with him before i would pray with him i said young man you are not from the north you are not uh, fulani you are not hausa how did you get into the presidency because i hear he's one of the few people that can literally play with the president like play and i said okay this is interesting how did that happen was it through a connection and he said no i found out it was just value and grace value listen i hope you are not angry leave that local champion mentality leave it if the highest student in a class got, gets 20 over 100 he's still the highest but did he pass many years ago i was in secondary school and we had this debate you know this quiz and debate and in our local environment we seem to be the best no matter what we did we were still the best until we went to do a 
uh, I think a state or, or national competition, we knew we were joking. When we got there, the English of the student, you know, good schools, good school fees, the uniforms alone. <sighs> when we returned back for the first time, I was embarrassed being in that school. As young as I was, I started going to the state library. The state library. I said, no. Even though I'm from this background, I reject, I, I will not receive the prophecy that comes with this background. Don't give me the excuse and say, I came from this. I didn't have the opportunity to go. No! Kill that excuse today. In the name of Jesus, I want you to leave this service with an anger, a determination. God is calling me to the oil and gas sector. The key is not to roam around NMPC. Leave them alone. Go back and do your homework. Don't pamper yourself. Even when you cry, burn the candles. Wake up in the night when others are sleeping. You're a man of God. It's not the time to sleep. It's too early. Uh-uh. Stay until you get something that is of substance. Open your Bible and study. When they are sleeping, pray. Cry before your maker. God, bring something upon my life. You are praying. That if anybody ever gives me his mic to stand upon his pulpit, he won't be waiting for me to go down and then warn the executives and say, don't ever bring this man to this church again. No. Money is a receipt. Money is proof. Listen, when you buy a product, you only receive a receipt when it is being paid for. Money is a receipt that you have paid the price. When you have paid the price, the receipt comes to you. We have to pray. Please rise up on your feet. Our service time is on. I apologize for taking a few minutes. But let's just steal two minutes out and pray. Listen. I don't know why God brought you here, but after me will come many great speakers, your pastor inclusive, and they are going to be sharing with you very serious things. I wish we had the time to deal with other issues, but this is already sufficient foundation for you. It is on the strength of this. Business is simply a channel that gives your value expression. Listen to me. It is not just about business. Business is simply a channel. When you package your value, listen carefully, you package your value and you serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That is business. That's all business is. Business is not a shop. It's not oil and gas. It's not real estate. It's simply the art of packaging your value, serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. The most important thing is not the building. Is you are we ready to pray father I make a covenant with my destiny that I will never be mediocre I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation I make up my mind that I will be exceptionally valuable exceptionally valuable as a man of God as a business person as a lecturer as a career person is someone praying let the days of shame and reproach that comes through incompetence and amateurism be out of my life i embrace competence master your field master your field in ministry master your field in business spend time buy books buy your pastor's materials spend time listen and listen again listen and listen again listen and listen again pray whilst you do so hallelujah praise the lord this is my final session i want to speak over your life you don't have to kneel please stand after teaching all of the principles there are others 
there are three supporting principles to the law of value hallelujah it's called the law of productivity productivity is turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful then serving them with excellence the third law i wanted to talk about is called the law of increase and there are three supporting laws there one of it is called the law of exchange your pastor alongside other people will teach you they will teach you multiple streams of income they will teach you the laws of investment they will teach you financial management because management is the key to increase every time there is no management increase is withheld increase is proof that there is effective management but then there is a prophetic dimension to wealth and sad for the time but i want to just speak this i sincerely apologize i am sorry and i apologize to you but i have to tell you this because we are people of the kingdom when we have an advantage so when we journey through these business angles now just prophesying and speaking to people without teaching them these fundamentals will only destroy them and produce lazy people who move around and say i have an anointing for prosperity and yet they are not valuable but then in addition to all of these laws let me give you a story it was not always like this for me i shared with you my story once upon a time we went for a crusade and we could not pay the sound people 150,000. i was about to be taken to the cell not because i was a bad person i preached the gospel people were healed but i could not afford to pay 150,000. someone came and wrote me a check of 80,000, and i gave the person they went to the bank and it bounced they came back together with security people. They came down. They said, no, you, you want to deceive? I said, no, I'm a sincere person. That was when I found out that being anointed and just being sincere is not the seed to prosperity. How could a man be so anointed? Deaf ears were opening. Blind eyes were opening. People were healed and 150,000 it was a while ago but it was still a serious thing I pleaded with them and then I saw a scripture Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2 and Jacob told his sons he said I have heard that there is corn in Egypt he said get the theater and buy for us so that we may eat and not die even a prophet will die when there is no corn the Bible says, Proverbs 22, verse 1 and then verse 7. It says, the rich and the poor meet together. It says, the Lord is the maker of them all. He never said the Lord made them so. The Lord made them all. And then when you get to verse 7, there is a fearful and instructive scripture there. The rich anybody will rule over the poor anybody. The rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. And the borrower will remain a servant to the lender. And I said, minus me. Listen to me. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth. I assure you, there is wealth by prophecy. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets. There is a real grace for wealth and prosperity. I began to search for men and women with that grace because I was tired of the situations in my life. It never tires me to give my story, sir. I bought sugar cane for two women in Joss and they blessed me. I just wanted to bless them because they were elderly people. I said, no, I was trained well. I can't allow my mothers to come here and I pleaded with them. I said, please let me pay. It was just about 100 Naira. And they turned and began to bless me. And one of them looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold.
the Lord gave me an instruction that one day he was going to send me to go and meet God's servant Bishop David Oedeko. And on that morning I woke up and he said, today is the day. I carried a seed I will not tell you. But that one is not Ishmael, that's Isaac. When you give it, you can drive Ishmael without thinking about it. But the day you give Isaac, you will know. Precious seeds. When I went down to Canaan land, did what the Lord instructed me to do. When I came out, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, put your hand on the ground. I laid my hands on the ground and he said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I was in Port Harcourt in 2007. It was a prosperity convention like this. Please listen carefully. And after the first day, it was Reverend Eddie Owase that was brought to come and preach. Evangelist. When he was done, by the next day, the Holy Ghost gave me an instruction. He said to give everything. How many things did I have? gathered everything plus my recharge card and locked it in the bag that if I give you, you will not even collect. I prayed in tongues for three hours there because I was tired. Most of you are not yet tired of your situation. Sincerely, I'm telling you. I dragged that thing. I was outside. Like many are outside now. It was an overflow. And when they finished the meeting, people came, gave lands, gave cars, gave houses. And I wanted to come out and drop my seed and the Holy Ghost decided to embarrass me. He said, remain there first. When everybody finished giving theirs, he said, now you can go. I held my bag like I was going for a funeral. And I dragged that bag there. People were looking at me. When you are serious about change, you will not care who is looking at you or who is not looking at you. When I came, I dropped that bag. Something in me died with that bag because it was everything I had. I went back outside and I sat down. And God is my witness. I heard the voice of God. And he said, my son, you have entered into wealth. By the next day, 6, 10, exactly in the morning, somebody calls me shaking under the anointing. Who is this? And he said, are you Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, send me your account. I said, no, all these scammers. No way. How much do I have there? You want to now frustrate me? And he said, no. God gave me an instruction. I could not believe what he said. Who are you? He said, it doesn't matter. I was instructed. The rest is history. Listen, I want to challenge you. It is not my culture. And you cannot imagine how difficult it is for me here. But let me tell you this. If I just tell you, share the grace and go home, I lied to you. Listen to what I'm telling you. I lied to you. I'm going to challenge you. There has to be the release of a seed and a sacrifice. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, no problem. No, we are people of integrity. You can go home the way you want. But I'm telling you what I did and what I know happens in scripture. He offered a thousand bond offering that night. And not an angel came. God, he said, what should I do for you? And he said, God, give me an understanding heart. He said, you are wise. Listen, there are times where we've had to shift things. I wish the body of Christ were matured enough to allow us share some testimonies. But sometimes when you want to say it, you just remember what can happen and it's better to just give God glory and continue. But honestly, my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. I know what it means to move from grace. Which one is first? Grass to grace. And someone is here, you are standing. You are not standing for yourself alone. Here at this house, the Lord is giving you an instruction. I'm going to ask as many of you who the Lord is speaking to and saying it's a new season for you. That there is a sacrificial seed. Don't do anything emotional and then come and put yourself in trouble. No. 
let every man give as he has purposed in his heart but there are times that you cast even your bread upon the waters bread is for eating but there are times you cast even the bread the bible assures you that after many days you will find it it says give a portion to seven and even here to eight you do not know the disaster that will come upon the earth i live my life and it's a life of sacrifice i know what god can do it will not always return as money it can return as relationships in this kingdom who likes you matters so someone can look at you and vow no strings attached that for as long as i'm alive as god lifts me he will lift you now i don't know if you have the seat here or you are making a commitment but if your pastor would allow me i want to challenge you please don't tell lies you are before jesus christ many people come like this emotionally and then they go back they don't i want to pray for people here who are trusting God and say, I want to use a sacrifice as a weapon to get out of this realm of hardship with revelation. I'll pray for everybody. I'm not going to give you any amount. It's you and God. But it is something you know that you are ready to get out of it. Wherever you are, I want you to come and stand here in one minute. I want to pray for you. Please don't, don't waylay the man of God and his wife. And then if here is filled, you can still just stand in the aisles. As you are here, please pray. Please pray. Don't waste your time. You came to church. Our time is already up. But God wants to change our lives. I want you to stand here with revelation. Some of you are in business and the business has refused to move. You have done all you know to do and it has refused to move. Some of you are here and it looks like certain realms. You cannot break out of certain financial realms. You keep recycling around that realm. God has sent me here with a grace in partnership with your pastor. Pastor, may I please request, is it alright if I request that you just come here with me? You remind me of the sacrifice I made. I remember. It was a conference with several people. Nobody saw me, but I was determined by God's grace that I would get out of this nonsense once and for all. Today I give God glory for that decision. I want to pray for you. And when I pray for you, for those of you who have whatever seed you are sowing, you can bring it and come and drop it before the altar here. And for those of you who need to make transfer, it's between you and God. Nobody brought you here by force. And so make sure that you do not, um, I don't know what system is going to be, but please, I want you to mean it. Some of you, God may be directing you to bring seeds directly to your man of God. Don't be afraid, you are still in place. I know that this is a man that God has shown mercy. I know that this is a man God has shown help. And I want to pray for you. Father, we are those you have shown mercy and you have shown grace. Here at this assembly and at this prosperity conference, Lord, I know you are about to shift our lives. You do not scam. You are not a fraudster. You are the God of heaven. And in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I stand in faith and in agreement with Pastor Godwin over these people who have come out. In the name of Jesus, I declare the two lift gate that must be open for the next season of your life financially. We speak to those gates, Ephata, be open. Ephata, be open. In the name of Jesus, I place an unction upon your life. Hear me. I decree and declare, carry grace from today. Grace that compels the ministry of destiny help us. Everything that represents financial hardship of all sorts, circles of failure, just when you are about to rise, something happens and brings you down. I call upon my God who is the God of your pastor 
to arise and by prophecy we shift you enter a new season enter a new dimension even financially he says my horn has thou exalted my head like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runs over i want to pray for you in the name of jesus the grace that compels creation to listen to you the grace that compels a territory to yield its increase to you i declare may that grace rest upon you now every dying business here hear the word of the lord we speak to you by the spirit of resurrection come back to life now hear me there are many of you who are very valuable but you do not have visibility no one has seen what you represent to honor you it's one thing to be gifted acts chapter 12 says that when they bound peter prayers were offered by the church and an angel came the bible says the first gate opened the second gate opened and then they came to the iron gate that leads to the city there is a gate that when it opens all you see is the city it's a gate for influence i want to pray for you just because you are out of prison does not mean the city has seen you there are many anointed people many gifted people but the grace for visibility is not yet there i pray for you standing in partnership with the grace upon your pastor in the name of jesus christ receive the grace for visibility receive the grace for visibility the same grace that made the animals to come to the ark of noah without him looking for them two by two seven by seven they came in in concert and enter the ark may that grace call your destiny help us in the name of jesus christ wherever they are across this nation wherever they are across this city wherever they are around the world we compel that you enjoy their ministry and the financial level you currently are now you are so in at that level may you never go down past that level in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ for those of you who have your seat please come and drop it your pastor will speak over it those of you who are maybe writing i don't know how we do it is there a okay for those following online i know there are some of you connecting to this service and now i know that you want to sow you want to give please make sure that you you just just lay it at the altar here do it orderly and then you can go back to your seat and then for those who need to make transfers for some of you here the lord might be leading you to sow specific seeds into the life of your man of god and his wife don't fight it it's an instruction by god and if god gives you that instruction whatever it is that he says to do i want you to do it with understanding praise the name of the lord i want you to do it with understanding and ensure that you sow let your sacrifice speak in the name that is above all names if i were you whether i came out or not i will make sure that at least something leaves me to come down here i will make sure that something leaves me for the sake of his majesty for the sake of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ pastor thank you it truly is an honor to have shared the word of god with your people and i love you i love this church and the lord bless you the lord increase you let me encourage you finally please pay attention to all the other speakers coming almost every one of them are people who god has helped in different ways you must obtain the grace to listen go and get your pastor's materials especially as it concerns finances and stay with it this morning service is not all that there is you have to listen again and again for growth and for transformation the lord increase you the lord bless you in Jesus' name. Wow. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.